Welcome to the part 13 of this video series. In this part, we will look at Azure AZ900 real certification questions. These are latest ones. All the old videos prior to this, that is parts 1 to 11 still applies. Those are still relevant. Plus there is another playlist on AZ900, which was from a year back that is still relevant. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give a thumbs up if you like my videos. If you have any constructive comments, please drop in your comments. For questions 1 to 64, please refer parts 1 to 12 of this video series. Let's jump into question 65. So here the first part says, so you have service level agreements for paid Azure services. It is asking if it has to be 99.9%. .9 yes, it has to be. Otherwise, who will go on cloud when they get that kind of assurance on premises? So the next question is talking about the service level agreement uptime. Okay, this can be increased by adding multiple regions. So suppose you have one region, you are in Ohio and it is giving you some level of SLA. Now you want to increase that level of SLA. So you can build one more region, maybe in US West Coast. Okay, so that way if this fails, you still have your applications on this one and hence you will get more uptime. So this is yes, because this is a way architects use to increase the availability and increase the SLA guaranteed SLA uptime. Now let's look at the last question. Now what this is saying is you can also increase your SLA by purchasing multiple subscriptions. See subscriptions are a part of a region. One region can have multiple subscriptions. How is it going to increase your SLA guaranteed uptime? It will not because if this fails, it fails. There is no backup like this one. Hence this is no. So this is the answer. Let's lock it. Now the next question here. See, you have one application. Okay, you have one application. This one application has two components. What are those? You have Azure Web Apps as one component. And then you have your Azure SQL database as the second component. And both have different SLAs. In my previous video, I spoke about how to calculate it. The calculation always has product of these two SLAs. So the answer should be product. These all three options are wrong. There is no min, no max, and there is no requirement of difference. The calculation always considers product. Let's lock this answer and move forward. Let's look at this question. The first one says the cost of Azure resources can vary between regions. Yes, the cost is different because if you have your region in a developed country like London, suppose a part of UK and suppose in a developed country like US, the cost of maintaining those data centers will be high. But if you have those in developing nations like India, the cost will be less. Hence, there is always a difference of cost between the regions. So the next question is talking about if an Azure reservation is used to reserve server capacity at a specific data center. Yes, you can reserve the server capacity. Either you can use the pay as you go model or you can reserve the capacity. If you reserve it, you have to make a commitment of one to three years. Okay, that's why this answer is yes. The last one says you can stop the Azure SQL database instance to decrease the cost. Yes, you can stop the instance. When you, once you stop the instance, you save on the compute cost, but your storage cost will still be there. So that's why this is yes. So this is the final answer. These three answers be important to understand the concepts. So in this case, the first question 
this is talking about consumption plan so consumption plan it is usually used for serverless architectures for example aws or uh, azure functions and the uh, best part is this is the default plan so you pay a fixed rate for all the data sent to and from the virtual machines no the the rate the data transfer rate is not fixed okay that is wrong it is variable and consumption plan helps you reduce your overall costs by paying only for the extra capacity when it is required since it is based on serverless architecture so you pay only when the usage happens otherwise you don't pay so this is yes and the third is is serverless computing an example of consumption based plan yes it is it is all the serverless computing has different plans you see this documentation it has a consumption plan this this is a consumption plan it has premium plan and it has dedicated plan so if you see uh, consumption plan is the default hosting plan you only pay only when your functions are running otherwise you don't pay for it the documentation that i am showing is for azure functions hosting options so we will lock these three answers so the next question is talking about the azure service previews so if the first one is talking about if you have something in a private preview is it released to all customers no it is not released to all customers it is only released to some customers who agree to pilot it or do a proof of concept using the private preview the second question is talking about an azure service in public preview is released to all customers yes it is released to all customers because they have gone public that means all of the customers and users can use the service the last one is talking about general availability is it released to only a subset of azure customers the answer is no general availability is released to all customers so this is the final answer let's lock it so the next question this is talking about is uh, azure free account so the azure free account has a spending limit yes it has a spending limit in india it is 15000 rupees around 14900 something okay then it is talking about the azure free account has a limit of two terabyte of data that can be uploaded to azure no there is no limit even if it is a free account there is no limit you can go beyond two terabytes and last one says azure free account can contain unlimited number of apps no there is a limit on the number of web apps and this is the final answer so please subscribe to my channel hit the like button if you like my videos this brings us to the end of part 13 of this video series. Stay tuned for more such interesting parts. Remember, these are real certification questions. The chances of same or similar questions coming in the certification is very high.